What up guys, it's Markin, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Battlefield 4 beta. Uh, it is coming out tomorrow, as most of you know, for the premium subscribers, I guess you could call whoever bought premium, and also, um, I think it had something to do with Medal of Honor or pre-order. There's a couple different ways to get into it, uh, but it starts tomorrow, October 1st, for those of you who have that uh, exclusive beta access, and then it's October 4th for the rest of everybody. But one of the big things I want to talk about in terms of Battlefield 4 is the Levolution. Their little word that they've been using that just sounds so corny. But if you think about it, it actually could change a lot, a lot with the game. And uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about. Now you have um, your set pieces of quote-unquote Levolution, like the Skyscraper and uh, in all the videos on the Parasol Storm map. All the videos everybody's seen in Battlefield 4 is that big skyscraper coming down and causing the waves to go crazy and, you know, changing the level. And that's kind of what they've been building on was that, you know, main set piece for everybody to see. It's kind of the same thing like the tower in Caspian Border in Battlefield 3. That'll come down with however many tickets left. It'll always come down no matter what. Now what I think is pretty cool is there's a lot of this that that's not set pieces. There are events that you can trigger as a team that'll actually change the outcome of the map. Like on that map they have um, like a lightning storm I think crashes down on a tower and you have a, the option of blowing up the tower and if you blow up the tower it'll basically set this destroyer free and the destroyer will crash into the beach. So you have this enormous aircraft destroyer aircraft destroyer, you know, this enormous uh, naval destroyer that crashes into the beach and it completely blocks the line of sight down the entire beach. So if you're a recon, let's say, and you're setting up with your sniper rifle from the other side of the beach, if that thing crashes into the beach, you lose all of your sight. You have no line of sight, it just blocks everything. So then the objective really, you give yourself a sub-objective to kind of take control of that aircraft carrier now. You can get on top of the aircraft carrier you can take control and really hold the entire map from from that carrier, from that destroyer. And when you're on it, there's anti-air weapons on it. So if you are getting destroyed by the other team in the air, helicopters, jets, and you have no answer for them, you might want to take out that tower, let the destroyer crash on the beach, and then take up those anti-air guns and take them out that way. It's, it's awesome that they have those little things that isn't like the big set pieces but allow you to actually manually change how the battle goes. Now there's another map that I don't know remember the name of it. I don't even know if they've announced it yet, but it's basically like a um an urban area and it starts out with tanks and uh quads and all that. And if a team manages to destroy one of the levees that's on the side of it, it will completely flood the map. Instead of spawning tanks and quads and things like that, you're gonna start spawning boats and jet skis. So if you are a team that is really heavy into infantry and want to play that game, you know, guns, you want infantry on the ground, you don't want any tanks, and or I should say you don't want any boats, tanks, things like that, you're gonna to want to try your best to defend that levy so the opposing team doesn't just destroy your entire game plan. Now if that gets flooded, Basically, like I said, the boats uh, will spawn. It takes up the entirety of the map. So the water level just goes up and up into these skyscrapers. And basically, you have infantry on the top, on the roofs, that are trying to control this. And obviously, you can tell that that's, uh, that's going to be a little bit more different than, than just running around the streets. So I think it's pretty cool that uh, you, know, you can change the maps little by little based on your play style. If you're more infantry-oriented... You want to try and keep that water out as much as you can so you can control the buildings. But in another way, if you are more geared off of naval warfare, if you want to use your boats and things like that, and you're getting destroyed by their infantry, you want to take out that levy. So it kind of takes and makes little like counter-objectives, little uh, sub-objectives that you're going to want to go to. They have those, um, what are they called, bollards, I think they're called. They're uh, these little like steel beams that come up from the ground, where if you want to stop tanks from coming into a certain area you can raise the bollards up and it'll make the tanks unable to come into this area so if you have an extremely hot spot that you're trying to defend you can kind of have one person like working the switch 
to let your tanks into this hot area and if the enemy team tanks come up you can put those bollards up to stop the enemy tanks from coming in so you can really control that area but I mean then you have these like small little battles over the one guy controlling that and I, I think the little things like that are gonna make Battlefield 4 you know as different as it can be from Battlefield 3 you're gonna have a lot of the same concept which is good I think Battlefield 3 is perfect I think they did a great job but in terms of you know kinda getting off the beaten path there's really not gonna be a lot to it which I'm fine with but I think little things like the the little sub objectives that you can create for yourself are going to uh, help it out a lot so let me know what you guys think in the comments thank you for watching and as always stay active